Hey there, my name is ZW Buckley, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to teach you how to set up your own custom slicing presets in Ableton Live. I'm also going to show you some advanced techniques for setting up really transformative presets as well. Let's go ahead and jump right in. When working with samples, a common workflow is to take a sample and chop it up or to divide it into smaller units. And the reason why we divide it into smaller units and to chop it often is so that we can then process those units into some sort of different shape whether that's through effects or warping or some other means. And then usually the thing that you're taking then with that new processing is you are creating a new sequence with your chops by rearranging the elements in some fashion. And then you've taken a sample and you've made it your own. The cool thing about slicing in Ableton Live is that it automates those first three steps for you. You essentially set up a preset that takes a sample, divides it however you would like, and then processes it in the way that you want. And so something that used to take several steps, if you just front load the work and save the preset, can happen instantaneously. And the best part about it is that slicing like this is easy to do. So let's say I want to slice this somber little piano loop. So if I right click on my sample, I can go all the way down in the context menu and select slice to new MIDI track. And that brings up our slicing menu. Now we can choose to slice by some sort of rhythmic subdivision or warp marker or transient. I'll leave it for a note for now. And depending on the slice preset that you choose, you can either preserve your warped timing or not. Now, Ableton has provided a whole bunch of stock slicing presets, but as you can see, you can save your own, which I have here. So let's just grab my spectral slicer preset and I'm gonna hit okay. And it is going to create 32 slices. And just like that, we now have a drum rack set up with all of these slices and my macros set up to do some cool spectral processing. And I just went ahead now and tweaked the macros really quickly and dialed in this pattern. And we can hear just how quickly that somber piano loop has been transformed into something very different. Creating your own custom slicing presets is easy to do, though it can be unintuitive. The two big things that you need to know are which devices can be used to make slicing presets and where do you save those slicing presets so that you can use them as needed. Let's create a simple slicing preset together and start walking through some of those steps. One of the challenges of working with sample drum breaks is not making them feel too static when you sequence them. And we can make a slicing preset that makes sequencing lively drums much easier. So let's save a slicing preset to our library, and I'm going to use that then to slice up this export from my drum kit generator. So on the MIDI track below it, I have a drum rack set up with a single instance of Simpler nested within it. In the controls section of Simpler, I'm going to set the LFO waveform to sample and hold, lower the rate all the way down, and we're gonna leave re-trigger on. And I'm going to set the volume and the pitch to 2% each. And so what this means now is that every time Simpler perceives an incoming MIDI note, it is going to subtly vary both the volume and the pitch of the sample using this LFO. So let's set up some simple macros so that we can control our rack. I'm going to go ahead and map the volume to macro one. I'm gonna map the pitch to macro two. Now I wanna step back over to the sample tab and I'm gonna switch this over to one shot mode because I don't want these samples to loop. I'm really thinking about drums for this one. So I'm going to then just go ahead and map the fade in and the fade out to macro three and macro four. And I'm now gonna go ahead and simplify the number of macros that we have here. And then I'm going to rename the rack and I will call it LFO breaks. And I'm going to now save this to my user library. And to do that, I'm going to go down to places, user library, and where you wanna to go to save your slicing presets is you want to go to defaults and then slicing. And we can see my four slicing presets are already there. So I'm going to click and drag this into my slicings folder, hit okay. And I'm going to now go to my clip, right click on it, Slice to new MIDI track, 16 slices is great. 
I will select my LFO breaks, and I'm going to hit OK. And now we can see I have my 16 slices set up with the macros. And the macros are mapped for every single slice. So I'm going to just plug in a very simple pattern really quick so we can hear the effect. And this is going to create subtle variations, but I'm going to crank this up quite a bit so we can really hear it. Versus if I take it all the way down to zero. In particular, listen to how static these hi-hats are compared to when I have it at just 2%. And just like that, you've made your first slicing preset. We can also use effects as part of our slicing presets, and one of the best ways to do that is to use a very under-discussed feature of Drum Rack. Much in the same way that the mixer in Ableton Live has return tracks, so too does Drum Rack, but too many people miss it because it isn't visible from the get-go. But if I go to my Drum Rack and I click on the show hide chain list, it now brings up a number of commands down here. I'm going to hit this R and it's going to show hide return chains. And this is an area then in which I can drop audio effects and create return chains just in the same way that I might create a return track. And when slicing, this is incredibly useful for setting up multi-effect chains. If we look at this track that I've used my stutter slice preset, I have one return chain set up with four instances of beat repeat that are each tied to a single macro for quickly adding stutters of different rhythmic value. And instead of using a send, I'm actually routing the output of each cell directly to the return chain. So whenever I slice something, it's automatically going to route into this return chain instead of needing to have four instances of beat repeat attached to every single cell. It's resource efficient, and it sounds really cool. Drum Rack and Simpler often take up most of the discussion when talking about creating slicing presets, but you can actually also create slicing presets with Sampler as well. Now you can actually use just a single instance of Sampler to create a slicing preset, and when you do, it just divides all of your samples amongst the zone tab. But if you want to use macros like I've done here, it has to be nested within a Drum Rack, which is what we've got set up right now. This preset takes advantage of Sampler's FM oscillator. One of the cool things that you can do with the FM oscillator is set it to loop. And when you do it with a tight enough release and decay, it ends up just adding these really nice rhythmic stutters to your sample. And so I've taken this same somber piano loop and I've sliced it to this preset. And so now I very quickly have this reversed piano with this neat rhythmic pulse. And it sounds like this, and it's really cool. Slicing is such a neat and powerful sound design tool. It's one of those production workflows where you go slow to go fast. Taking the time to set up these presets means that you can transform sounds more dramatically, more quickly when you're producing. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. I'm working really hard to try to grow this channel to 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2026, and it's your support that makes it entirely possible. Till next time.